Hi, this is uh, Jim, and I'm going to do a attempt to do a repair on a pretty difficult item to repair. That's a power amp, and uh, they can be difficult to repair, as I'll explain later. This particular one is a NAD NAD uh, 2400 power stereo power amp, and I've already disassembled it part ways. Uh, the main circuit board is still in the amp, but I've taken out the the board in the back that has some of the components. Uh, I'll show you what those are. They're the power transistors. They're mounted on this heat sink that fits into the back here. And then that uh, little, this board here is wired into the main circuit board via these leads that I've unsoldered here. And the reason uh, these kinds of repairs are difficult is that um, someone has either shorted the speaker leads and caused it to uh, malfunction or a component has failed on the circuit boards and caused one or more components to fail. And what happens in these amps is that uh, it's kind of a chain reaction. Uh, typically, the power transistors will short. It draws a lot of current and it blows the fuse, but before it does that, uh, the fuse tries to protect it, but it's not fast enough to keep it from zapping a lot of the other components. I was able to obtain a service manual for this amplifier um, by searching online, and I'm going to try to explain a little bit about this amplifier. It'll help you understand the repair. Um, here is part of the circuitry here in the power amp part and down at the bottom here is the power supply uh, actually AC transformer over here on the right feeding AC voltage to the rectifiers and filter circuits and then uh, DC voltage plus and minus I think it's 60 volts up to the uh, power amp circuitry let me enlarge this a little bit and try to move it over. Whoops, wrong way. Okay. Um, made it a little bit larger anyway. Um, feeds DC voltage up to these power amps, power transistors, and what we have is four power transistors in this circuit. And um, between each of these transistors are some emitter resistors that are 22 ohms and 5 watts each. They, this little dotted line indicates they're in a separate package with two resistors in each one. So what's failed on this particular amplifier is three of these power transistors. One of them is still appears to be okay and uh, one of these emitter resistors has failed. So too much current is flown once the once these uh, shorted these tra power transistors shorted collector to emitter, then um, too much current flowed through that for these resistors to uh, exceeded the five watt rating of those resistors, and they one of them failed, and it also blew the fuse. Uh, in addition to the transistors, the power transistors, and one of the em emitter resistors, one of these uh, little 5.6 ohm resistors that is collected to the base of one of the transistors has also opened. So open resistor, uh, open emitter resistor, and then shorted power transistors. And so the, I've taken a couple of approaches in trying to repair power amps over the years. The first one is to try to determine every component that's bad and then replace those components and then power the amp back up and see if it works. The problem with doing that is if you don't have every single component that has malfunctioned, then you may very well experience another chain reaction that destroys the components that you've replaced, maybe even some ones that you didn't the first time. Uh, so you're back at square one. And although it doesn't seem as scientific or as smart to uh, do it this way, a better way to make this repair, in my experience, is 
to replace a lot of the components in this general area of the circuit that could have caused the problem. Uh, and that would include some of these uh, semiconductors in the area of the power transistor uh, circuitry, uh, as well as maybe some of the diodes, and to certainly check some of, all of the resistors that are in the immediate area here. And then once I have replaced those parts, the next thing I would do, I will do, is I will use a variac. That's a piece of equipment that allows you to turn up the AC voltage that powers the amp, uh, turn it up very slowly, and then I will measure at some strategic points on the in the circuit to make sure that uh, current levels and voltage levels are as they should be. Um, specifically on the, the current measurements to make sure they aren't exceeding the uh, ratings of these uh, uh, semiconductors and resistors. So I've got the parts ordered and when they come in I will replace those and then we will proceed on with the testing of the circuit. I've replaced the shorted power transistors in the one channel of this amplifier uh, that does not work. And um, they are located back in this area. It's kind of hard to see, but they're back through this um, heat sink area mounted onto a separate assembly, which I removed from the unit and replaced those transistors. And each one of those transistors was mounted to the heatsink board with a um, mica insulator, and I used uh, transistor silicon grease, which conducts heat, and you put that on both sides of the mica insulator in a very small amount. You don't want to use too much, and then tighten the uh, mounting screw back down to securely hold the transistor against the heatsink, and there were three of the four that were shorted out, but I went ahead and replaced all four of them. And then also the two emitter resistors that are mounted right here, uh, I replaced those also. Uh, so the next step will be um, to finish up wiring this uh, assembly, the heatsink assembly, back to the main board. There's little jumper wires that go between those two boards. and uh, finish resoldering all those and mounting the heatsink back to the chassis. And then we should be ready to uh, slowly power it up with a variac and, and see if it uh, functions as it's supposed to. I've replaced the shorted out and uh, defective bad components from this amplifier. And now we're going to uh, test it. We're going to see if our repair is on track. Um, luckily for this amp, there was a um, service manual available online, which I printed out. And we're going to follow the procedures that it gives here for main amplifier alignment. And so I've hooked up a couple of meters here. And I'm measuring two things here. Um, we're going to measure center voltage check and idle current adjustment. And the procedure here gives me the test points, the points in the circuitry that I need to collect, connect my leads to. And what I have done is use some little clip leads to make those connections on the circuit board. And then the clip leads are attached to the leads of my meters. And the left meter here is going to read the, uh, the zero voltage. I'm going to set it on the 200 milli, millivolt scale, and the tolerance is plus or minus, let's see, I think it's 100 millivolts, plus or minus 100 millivolts. And then the other one, we're going to set the idle current, that's the current without a signal, without a load, of the current that would go through the power transistors, and that should be 14 millivolts. So now we're ready to power it up. 
I have the power turned on to the amp. Well, I have the switch on, let's say. And I have the power cord plugged into my variac here. Here's the power cord plugged into my little variac setup that I have. And really, only the only thing the variac is is a means of controlling the 120 volts from the main circuit um, and to bring it up slowly. I like to do that just to avoid any sudden surprises. I've also connected a light bulb in series with the power cord to the amplifier so that uh, it will limit the current that flows through the power cord to the amplifier and also give us a visual indication of how much current is flowing. So I'm going to slowly now power this up. I'll turn it to the right. That will increase the power. We can watch the meters at the same time. The one on the left goes up initially. I'm still turning, 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 increasing the, the voltage. And you'll notice we have a little glow from the bulb and the candy, a little bit of power, a little bit of current draw for the amplifier. So if you look around here on the circuit, this, if you can see where I'm pointing, but there is a little potentiometer right here that adjust, adjusts the bias or the current flow, idle current flow. So I'm going to turn it as we watch the meter. As you can see, it's rising. I slipped out of my point. Let me go back here. Excuse me if I lost track of trying to do two things here. 13.1, 13.5, Try to hit it right on the button. A little, little touchy. Okay, 13.8. What we're going to do is let it sit for a little while because um, the procedure calls for that and it makes sense to let it warm up for about five minutes and make sure it's stable. We're within our 100 millivolts tolerance on the uh, zero setting here. It's reading 24 millivolts and we're reading 13.8 for the idle current. Both of those look good. So we're just going to let it sit for uh, five minutes and make sure those stay within range. Tweak them if necessary. I showed you the alignment, the testing and alignment of uh, the uh, left channel. And so I did the same thing on the right channel, although the right channel was not damaged. I just wanted to check the alignment and reset it. So both channels um, have now been tested. They look good. Um, I've powered it up and down and it looks good. I've hooked up a couple of speakers to test it. Now we're going to turn on the power. And let's see, I got my iPod connected up here. Put on a little music here. So, as you can hear, it sounds pretty good, even with these uh, test speakers here. What I'll do is put the amp back in the uh, chassis, uh, back in the case, I should say, and um, hook it up to some better speakers, let it play for a while on both channels. Uh, it has an A and B set of speaker terminals. We'll try them both out. And um, if everything goes good, ready to give back to my friend who uh, is the owner of the amplifier. 
So I hope this has helped you. It's more about the philosophy of how you go about repairing uh, <clears throat> an amplifier like a power amplifier, a little bit more complicated repair. Um, but anyway, that's it. And uh, check out some of our other videos. Thanks.